Look at that symbol, pirates. That mark represents the unity of over 170 nations in the four seas and the Grand Line. This is the world. The world government is the leading faction in One Piece. As stated before, this organization presides over more than 170 nations, and by proxy controls most of the One Piece world. They maintain this power through organizations such as the Marines and Cypherpole. The only ocean that the government doesn't have authority in is the New World portion of the Grand Line. This is due to the four emperors and their own militaries. However, no one emperor can even come close to the full might of the world government. To understand why this institution is so powerful, we have to go back 800 years to the Void Century. Almost a millennium ago, a faction known as the Ancient Kingdom ruled the world, with technology that possibly surpassed that of today's. That is, until an alliance of 20 kings banded together to defeat them. It's unknown how or why these events occurred, but regardless, the alliance succeeded and became known as the world government. The 20 kings became known as the creators of the world, all while relocating to the top of the red line. There, a city was made known as the Holy Land of Marijois. Within this land was Pangaea Castle, and inside of that was the Empty Throne. This throne is inhabited by no one person. Instead, the 19 swords before it represent equal power among the 20 kings. Now you may be saying, 19 swords, 20 kings, what the fuck? But actually, there was one ruler that split off from the other 20. Nefertari D. Lily. Lily remained in her home country of Alabasta, or at least that's what the public record says. In actuality, she never came back to her homeland, and instead helped create the Poneglyphs, ancient texts that house the real history of the world. And I think it's a good time to talk about the true nature of the world government. See, most people see this faction as a good organization that upholds peace and justice. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. In reality, the world government is a totalitarian dictatorship that runs on slavery and mass genocide. Now you may have heard dictatorship and said, wait, I thought there were only 19 rulers. Well, no, because sometime after the formation of the Alliance, one Nerona Emu rose above the other 18 monarchs and proclaimed themselves king of the world. It's unknown how this rise to power happened, it may have been forceful, it may have been allowed, but what we do know is that the descendants of the 18 monarchs are oblivious to this figure, who is most likely immortal. Speaking of these descendants, they are known as the Celestial Dragons, or the World Nobles. There are many nobles that reside in Marijua, and there's a hierarchy to them. First, we have the Basic Nobility, these are the pigs that sit atop of the One Piece world. Selfish, greedy subhumans who believe that they are above everyone and everything. But for all intensive purposes, they kinda are. Regular people must refer to them as gods, they practice public slavery despite it being illegal, and on that note, they can commit any heinous crime that they please. The nobles even go so far as wearing helmets as to not breathe the same air as commoners. However, there's an even more zealous faction than this, God's Knights. At the time of this recording, we don't know much about these guys, but the member we do know about, St. Figurland Garling, has the authority to execute a noble if he so pleases. That's a pretty high authority, but there are only 10 figures who hold this position. Above God's Knights are the Five Elders. To the public, the Five Elders, or the Gorosei, are the highest authority in the world, but now we know that they just carry out Emu's will. On the topic of Emu's will, there are a horde of horrific crimes the world government has committed. These crimes are including, but not limited to, mass genocide, the aforementioned slavery along with human trafficking, child trafficking, human experimentation, 
solicitation, hate crimes, and oh, I can't forget what comes with all of this, mass censorship, which for the US is unconstitutional, but for the world government, it's a routine activity. Another act that isn't necessarily a crime is general corruption. And if this isn't apparent to you already, I'll give an example. A hundred years before the main story, the government discovered a material known as amber lead that was highly toxic. However, that didn't matter because they can make a bag off it. They kept the truth of this element a secret and we all know where this is going. The country of origin, Flavance, became completely contaminated with a life-threatening disease known as Amber Lead Syndrome. This disease isn't contagious, but the government didn't release that information, so neighboring countries attacked Flavance. The attacks, along with the disease, left only one survivor, Trafalgar D. Law. And on the topic of that initial, D, while we still don't know what it stands for, we do know that the D clan is the enemy of the world government. Emu themselves described it as the name of those who once opposed us, and the world government tries everything in their power to exterminate D clan members. How do they go about doing this, you may be asking? Well, the government has a few organizations for assault and defense. First, there's the Marines. I've made an entire video about them in the corner above, but I'll give you a brief summary. The Marines are the primary military force of the world government, consisting of tens of thousands of troops. They're usually used to protect islands, hunt down criminals, and engage with pirates. However, those with the rank of Admiral are deployed whenever a world noble is in danger. Since the nobles have priority over everyone and everything, you can imagine how strongly admirals have to be. For more precise and covert acts though, we have Cypher Pole. Unlike the Marines, every Cypher Pole agent works directly for the world government, and there are only 10 levels to this organization. Cypher Pole 1 through 8 are your basic foot soldiers with Cell 1 being fodder and Cell 8 having some notable fighters. But Cypher Pole 9 is where this changes. CP9 is a group of child soldiers who perform covert operations. This sect is allowed to kill any civilian that is not allied with the government and is not officially known to the public. Even further than that is CP0. They are the shield of the world nobles and will unquestionably lay down their lives for one action. Surprisingly though, they aren't kept a secret like CP9, most likely because they're more active defenders rather than covert ops. Most CP0 agents are powerhouses as well, with Luchi and Kaku being able to fight with emperors. We're not gonna be breathing out of it's not just the Marines and Cypher Pole that assist the world government, as I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Seven Warlords. Before their dissolutionment, the Seven Warlords of the Sea were pirates contracted by the government for more manpower. The contract basically said, fight for us and you can do whatever the hell you want, which is exactly what happened. Most pirates with the Warlord title committed terrible crimes all while the government turned a blind eye, or even protected them. As said before though, eventually the public got fed up with this system, calling for its end. This happened at the right time though, because the government had just completed their newest human rights violation, I mean, experiment, the Seraphim. The Seraphim are clones of the Warlords. They use the DNA of said Warlords and Lunarians all while having devil fruit powers built into their bodies. And if that was too confusing for you, let me just say, invincible flying children with magic powers. Sounds crazy, I know, but for the world government, this is kind of a W. Not only can the Seraph be cloned, but they're also completely obedient, which was a problem with the original Warlord system. In my opinion though, the invention of the Seraphim along with Cypher Pole and the Marines already spelled the end of the free world. Given enough time, these three powers will completely overcome piracy, and with that, the freedom of the common people. However, there is one faction that is actively fighting against the world government's tyranny. That's a video for next week though, so I'll see you then.